Hey there, everybody. Good morning. How you doing on this? Hang on. There, that's better. How you doing on this beautiful Wednesday morning? Already been out, got my walk in, back and ready to get at it. And I'm stoked. So I uh, hope you're having a great day already so far. Good morning to Joe and Joe, the Joes. <laughs> and I've got my cup of Joe right here. Oh, that was a bad one. Sorry about that. Hey, if you are watching on the live stream, awesome. Do what the Joes have done. Leave a comment down there. Let me know that you are here. If you are not watching on the live stream, you're listening on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, watching on YouTube, maybe listening on SoundCloud. You got to head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com so you can join in the conversation with everybody else. And don't forget those thumbs up and shares. Those are awesome. We're going to talk about those a little bit more in just a minute. So, um, kind of a teaser title this morning, how to never fail again, but I'm going to show you in five and a half minutes or less, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to never fail again. That's our hashtag for today too. Good morning, Sarah. So as with a lot of these, this one uh, originated with a quote out of my reading this morning, this quote comes from my favorite, Mr. Tony Robbins. There is no such thing as failure. There are only results. Now you read that the first time you think, yeah, that's right. No such thing as failure, only results. But then here's the flip side to that. What's the part a lot of people leave out? If there's no such, oh, sorry. If there's no such thing as failure, then how can there be such a thing as success? There has to be a yin to every yang, a light to every dark. If there's no failure, then there's no success, right? Well, not exactly. Failure, you cannot call yourself a failure at something unless you quit. Think about riding a bike, right? We learn to ride a bike by failure, by negative results, right? Ouch, that hurt, my knee got scraped, don't want to do that anymore, right? And any of you who ever had a bike with metal pedals and the metal teeth on the pedals know what I'm about to say. You dang sure don't want your foot to slip off the pedals because that thing's like a cheese grater across your shin, right? You learn by those negative results, by those failures. But if the first time you got on a bike, you pedaled once or twice and then fell over and it's like, nah, screw it. I ain't doing that anymore and walked away. Now you're a failure at bike riding. You're only a failure if you quit. If you get the bike back up and you keep going, then, then you get to the end of the block, get to the end of the road. Now all of a sudden you're in a success state. Remember success and failure, right? Are states or successful outcomes and unsuccessful outcomes to maintain our theme this morning, right? They're states just like the baseball team, right? Every game is its own contest. Every at-bat is its own contest. Every pitch is its own contest. Right? So you can't isolate one instance and call it failure. Right? You can't call one potential client and have them hang up on you and say, God, I'm a failure at this. Right? You can't, you can't do this in isolation. You have to take it in totality. When you do that, right, now we get to look at, let's go back to this idea now about if there's no failure, there's no success. Define success. When you're learning to ride a bike, it's getting to the end of the block. When you're at bat, it's to put the bat on the ball, right? I mean, you're not thinking World Series. You're just thinking make contact, right? I mean, you have to look at this in context, both micro and macro, right? My micro context in the baseball analogy, my micro context is make contact. My macro content, uh, context is win the World Series. But in order to do that, I've got to start by making contact. So the way to never fail again, man, I'm even getting in under time today. <coughs> the way to never fail again right, is to define 
both successful and unsuccessful outcomes as progress. Remember, the definition of progress is movement toward a goal. Even when you fall off the bike, you are making movement toward a goal. Right? Every customer, every prospect, every lead that you call that says no is progress toward the one that's going to say yes. Right? Every, every time you're in for the promotion and you don't get it, that's progress toward the time that you do. But if you sit back and think, I'm a, I'm a failure, oh, failed again, right? What are you doing? You're reinforcing that negative attitude, and that negative attitude becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the next time you go in, you ask for that promotion like, ah, look, I know you're not going to promote me anyway, but I'm here, so let's go ahead and get this out of the way. You think they're going to give you the job? No. I mean, it, like if I walked up to people and said, "Hey, um, you, you know, I, I know you probably don't don't feel like you need any coaching or anything, but so feel free to say no." But, um, you know, you want to coach? Or, what, what do you think the answer is going to be? Right? But when we live in that negative state, that's the world that we live in, and that's what we project on everybody else, and they are obliged to create that outcome for us. Stop doing that. It's not failure. It's progress. And that is how we never fail again. Catherine, good morning to you. Abby, good morning. The only way to fail is not to try. Everything else is a learning experience. I agree with the learning experience part, but you brought up trying. That's going to make me run over seven minutes. <laughs> that always reminds me of Yoda. Let's be honest, right? Do not try. Do or do not. There is no try. Right? I'm not going to try. I'm, I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. If you And here's the problem with the word trying. This is why Yoda gave Luke such a hard time about using the word try. Try gives you an out. Well, I'm going to try to do this. Well, see, I didn't think I could do it anyway. Don't give yourself an out. Do it or don't. I don't care. But pick one, left or right. You can't stand in the middle of the road, right? You, you got to pick one. And and look, here's a secret bonus. Anybody want bonus topic today? I'll give you some bonus topic today. Somebody's got to say in the comments that they want bonus topic today, or I'm not going to get there. Anybody? No? No one? Yeah, I hear what you're saying, Catherine, but it's that word. we got to get that word out of our vocabulary. It's like I don't like the word but, right? But means everything I just said is false. You know, the sky is beautiful today, but it's going to rain, right? All right, bonus topic. <laughs> yeah, Carly's right. She's heard this her whole life. The secret to being a great leader. It's really simple. The secret to being a great leader is to make decisions. That's it. Make decisions. I mean, think about King Leonidas, right? Uh, the Spartans that, that faced down uh, the Persian army. I am, I'm reasonably sure that if King Leonidas hadn't been there, somebody else would have taken up the sword and the spear and the shield and headed out to fight him. But, boy, the decisiveness that he showed and the determination got those people. He led those people, literally led them to their death, willingly. And I, I've said all along, I know Carly's heard me say this a hundred times. She heard me say it once. Right. If you have the right motivation, if you can inspire people to act, history is replete with examples of uh, of leaders who have convinced people to literally pick up rocks and sticks and face down armies. And what what followers want more than anything else, what followers want is a decisive leader. Now. 
They might want it for different reasons than you want it. They want it so that they don't have to be responsible. Okay, fine, whatever. Get in the rear, right? Just be decisive. Don't don't stand there and, and try to come up. That, look, the best decision is the one you make right now. It might be wrong. Okay, well, you're going to get another chance in just a second, right? I mean, you, you make the best decision you can at the moment with the information that you have and move, right? You can't, you can't sit still. You cannot sit still. There is only growing and decaying, right? That, that, or, or just to be blunt about it, growth or rot, right? You're either growing or you're rotting. Personally, I'd rather grow than rot. You cannot sit still. Make a decision and move. That, that is the number one secret to being a great leader. All right, there's your bonus topic for today also. Choose or lose. That's right. Oh, Abby, nothing is more frustrating than when people can't make a decision. We've all had this experience, right, where we've been waiting on, look, here's what you need to do. Just need you to say, okay, well, let me think about that. No, you don't need to think about it. I've already done all the work. Here's the pros and cons. I've weighed everything. He just, I just need you to sign off on this. Well, I get back with me after lunch. Ugh. And and look, some people. Hey, you getting two whole shows today? Look at this, fourteen minutes. Some people will look at you as um, quick tempered, uh, not thoughtful enough. Uh, not thorough. Th those are all just roadblocks they're throwing out in front of you. It, it's easy to sling mud when you're not in the game, right? It, it's the armchair quarterback, whatever analogy you want to use. It's easy to do that when you're not playing the game. Especially, especially if the decision you make in the moment turns out to not create the result you wanted. Well, oh, see, if they'd spent more time studying the options, we'd all be dead. That's what would happen. All right, now I've got to wrap it up. Not making a decision is making a decision. That is true. I agree with you, Joe. I agree with you 100%. All right, thanks so much for sticking here with the topic and the bonus topic. Kind of got off on a rant there. Sorry about that. It's Wednesday. That means coffee shop show is coming up in... One hour and 45 minutes. You can find that right back here. Uh, Eric and I will be at Old Town Coffee in beautiful downtown Five Points. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to come by and join us, please feel free to do that. I'll be there in about an hour or so from now. Uh, and grab a cup of coffee. All right, that's it. Uh, if you can't make it to the coffee shop show, shame on you. But, you know, okay. Fine, understand. Just be back here in the morning. And hey, listen, don't forget to share this with your network. I mean, there's two whole shows in this one show, right? It's it's a two for today. So uh, be sure to, to share this back out to your network because, as I point out all the time, when we're talking about creating value, who gets credit for the value? You do, because you shared it. All I did was talk for a few minutes. All right, you guys have a great Wednesday. I will be back with you again here tomorrow. Have an awesome day.